Um, hello again. So this time I'm going to be oops, um, talking about security on switches. There you go, I'll save it as that. So at the moment we have all our routing running, we've got spanning tree running, um, we've got our supposedly our root bridge should be the top one for at least for um, VLANs 22, 33 and 44 but who knows we'll have to investigate that we've got router on a stick we've got VLANs down here but we want to add a bit more security to our network um, now security is one of these weird things that normally we do at the end of the system but we should actually think about it really at the start of any design how to secure stuff because once security fails, um, it's hell to pay. You really need to get security sorted out early. Um, but, yeah, we need to get our way to that. So we're going to do three things as far as security across our network is concerned. One is we're going to create a black hole VLAN, um, which is not too difficult really, but anyway, we'll just have a look at what it does. Um, we're then going to add port security onto edge ports so these two switches, switch 3 and 2, they're ports that are facing down this way to our PCs and servers and printers and the like are our edge ports. We're going to put port security on that and we're going to secure a little bit of spanning tree so that no one can plug a switch down here and try to modify our spanning tree root bridge and other information up there. Um, there's a few other things you can do for security. Um, DACP snooping to stop um, different things happening, but it's out of the scope of CCNA. Um, CCNA security will certainly look at it. Um, there's certainly other things you can add as far as security is concerned, but for now, this is what we're going to play with. So let's go in and create our black hole VLANs. So we need to go into our three switches and, and create um, a new VLAN number. So Conf T, we're going to create a VLAN number. This one will give it 777, and the name we're going to call it is Black. Oops, Black Hole. And we'll do that on the three switches. So we'll create those so spanning tree doesn't have a hissy fit. So VLAN 777, and the name is. Black hole and switch to so VLAN 777 and we'll exit out of that one. Okay, so we've got our VLANs created. Um, let's have a look at our running config to remind us show our running config and what we set up previously is our trunking on these two switches is going through ports 1 and 2 we've added ports 3 to 10 on VLAN 22 and ports 11 to 20 on VLAN 33 and we actually just shut down ports 21 to 24 um, fast Ethernet and Gigabit 0, 1 and 2. Um, to me that's a better way of actually stopping people accessing your network onto different VLANs. Um, but we're going to do this slightly differently. We're going to add all these interfaces to the black hole VLAN and just go through that process. So we're going to add these to um, VLAN 777. So let's show VLAN brief. Have a look at our vlan.dat file. Um, there's our 777 sitting on there. Um, and the other thing we're going to look at is if you show interfaces um, trunk, at the moment all these VLANs are allowed and active in this what's called the management domain, which is our area of influence through these switches here. And this is the bit we want to disallow. We want to disallow 777. So we're going to add those ports. Whoop. 
where they gone? These ports into VLAN 777. We can just as easily add, keep them in VLAN 1, but yeah, we'll, we've created a VLAN 777. Let's go and use it. Eh? Okay, so let's go into it. Interface range FA0 slash 21 to 24 and gigabit 0 1 to 2 is the range that we want to play with and let's turn them on which is what we should have no shutdown they change state to down because there's nothing plugged into them um, now we go into um, switch port mode access and then switch port access VLAN 777 so let's have a look at this. So do show run. And there we have them all belonging to VLAN 777. If we do show VLAN brief, then there they are, they're in 777. And let's do show um, trunk. And if you hear that in the background, but that's nothing's changed in there. Okay, so what we want to do is across our trunks is we actually want to not allow 777. We actually don't want to allow VLAN 1 as well. We actually just want to allow 22, 33, and 44 across our systems. So let's exit that and we'll go onto our trunks. So interface range. FA0 slash 1 to 2 are my trunks. Um, and switch port trunk is where we want to go. And we'll put our question mark there. And this is the BC that we want. So before, when we did switch port trunk native VLAN 44, that's the command, that's the path we went there. But this is the way we're going to go now and we're going to go into the allowed option and VLAN and we'll go into there so switch port trunk allowed VLAN something or other so we can allow a range of VLANs so 22, 33, 44 is the ones we want allowed through there we can do everything except 777 and 1 but that seems a bit daft to me um, I just prefer the other way so we've also got we can add to the current list we can remove from the current list you can allow all VLANs if you want to go through but let's just go to what we want which is allowed VLAN and let's put the word or the VLAN IDs through there, so 22, 33, 44 and that's it switch port, trunk allowed and let's have a look what we've done, so show interfaces trunk says, now that's different isn't it, so VLANs that are allowed and active in the management domain so 22, 33, 44 and that's all we need to do. So we should do the same for the other side. So let's go through that process again. So what did we do? We said which ports do we want to be added to our VLAN? Well, we've added that before. 777. So we created a VLAN 777, which was going to be our black hole VLAN. We've named it. So let's look at the range that we want to play with. So interface range. FA0 slash 21 to 24 and gigabit 0 1 to 2 and our switch port mode is access and our switch port access is VLAN 777 so we've added them to that um, we should put the no shutdown command because I think we shut those ones down now shut shutting them down if someone were to plug a PC into that port when it shut down, they will get nothing. 
which is more secure than what we're actually doing. So, go figure. But if somebody wants you to put a, um, a VLAN in there, um, just to have, then great. Um, the people on VLAN 777 on this switch will be able to connect to each other, but they won't be able to go through our trunks, and we'll see that in a, in a minute. Okay, so we need to get our range um, 1 to 2, which is our trunking ports. So switch port trunk allowed VLAN 22, 33, 44. Woo, 444. And there it is again. So show interfaces trunk. And there it is. We've allowed the VLANs that we want. So we've effectively disallowed everything else. One seven 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 are the only VLANs that exist on here. And that's it. We've created our black hole VLAN. So let's just grab a PC just to test it out. Plug it in there. And plug our PC into 22, which is part of our black hole. We'll fast forward time a bit and we'll give ourselves an IP, otherwise things are going to get messy. So 10.0.0.1. Uh, that's a clean, simple one. We won't put a gateway in there. But let's just through simulation mode actually. Let's ping 10.0.0.2. Now we know that this does not exist across our network. And let's see how far the ARP goes. Hits our switch and dies. So, nice. It won't go up the trunks and that's effectively all we've done. Any ports that we don't want to go up the trunks, but you want them up, um, we can put into a black hole. And let's kill that. So that's the first thing we want. There's our black hole VLANs. We put it on our edge ports, our root, our root bridge, <laughs> our um, distribution switch up there. Doesn't need it necessarily, but if you want to, um, there are ports 4 to 24 and gigabit 0, 1 and 2 um, that you can add if you want to clean up the whole thing a bit more. Okay, so the next step in our port security journey. Let's go back onto our switch 3. What we want to do is actually put port security. We want to control the number of potential PCs that actually can connect to an individual port. So, we need to enable port security. So, interface range FA0 slash 3 2 20 is what I'm going to choose. You can choose your own. And what we're going to enable here is port security on those ports. So we'll just go through the basic commands and have a look at it. Our network can modify depending on whatever we want. Um, but let's have a look. So switch port, port security is our first command. To actually enable port security, we have to hit have that entered into our system. It will take a couple of defaults that are in there, one of which is the violation mode, the default is shutdown, and the other one is the maximum number of MAC addresses that you will accept on this port, and the maximum number is 1 in this case. You will not add this range of commands to your trunks, because if you put a maximum of 2 on your trunks, um, you're going to stuff up your network quite nicely. So it can end up on there, but yeah, we don't want that. Okay, so let's have a look at the three different options available to us under port security. So first of all, we enable it, and then we look at what we're going to play with. There's MAC address, maximum, and violation. So let's just put max in there, and all it is is just a number. So most of the time, in most networks nowadays, you're actually running a VoIP 
system so you'll have a, a phone and a PC plugged into that phone so there will be two MAC addresses coming into a particular port so let's have a maximum of two and there it is we've put said that a maximum of two MAC addresses can be obtained and stored on the switch um, we either put them in statically or they're obtained dynamically um, if more than that happens then we'll have a violation so while we're in the violation let's have a look at it there are three different options for violation so we need to set up one of these depending on your network so there's protect restrict and shut down now default is shut down and what the port does is it goes into a, a violated mode of shutdown it's not administer administratively shut down so if we set a maximum of two MAC addresses on this port and someone plugged in a third device which violated our rules then if we had shut down then our port will go into a blocking kind of mode and we would have to as administrators go onto it administratively shut it down and then administratively put no shutdown in there so fairly restrictive um, not only would it stop data going through but yeah, we have to go in and actually do some admin work so that would be for a particular server or you know, something that you really don't want people to muck around with you really want to know that it's actually happening um, within that as well it'll actually or should do actually um, increment the security violation count because you can get a, a number of different counts on different ports of how often it's being violated which is nice to know because if over time um, people are plugging devices in that you're not approving on your network um, you want to know where it is which port it is and who's actually doing what now the other two that we have there are protect and restrict if both of those or either of those are violated um, it won't allow data through until you plug in the original um, MAC addresses if you like or the original devices back in so it'll stop data going through from non-approved MAC addresses um, but if you plug an approved MAC address if you like um, it will allow them to go through now the difference between them is protect will drop all the packets from what we're calling insecure hosts um, and it won't increment a security violation count so it just goes yep fine I'm just gonna drop your packets plug in the correct stuff and we'll be happy well, everything will work again um, but yeah go away I don't want to know about it but restrict will actually drop all the packets from the insecure hosts and increment the security violation count so that we know that things are happening on our system so restrict is a nice one so let's just put that in as our violation mode for these ports and it's different to um, shutdown as well because shutdown is um, our default it won't actually show up in our config files so so far so good the other thing that we need to play with is our MAC addresses so here we've actually got two options we can put in so there it's saying h.h.h .h .h .h. we can actually put in the 48-bit MAC address that we want on this port physically type it in that's a bit onerous but there's a nice option for us we can put sticky in there and all good so what does sticky do the first two devices that are connected into this port will have their MAC addresses stuck and put into running config so let's control Z that let's show our running config let's have a look at what's actually happening so these are the security features that we've put in the first up we've added switch port port security that enables port security and the default settings we've then said 
Actually, I want a maximum of two devices connected to this switch. Thank you. I want to stick those MAC addresses when they start sending data through. We will stick them into our running config. And should a third device be added to the network or to that port somewhere along the line, then I want to block data going through that port and my security violation should increment by one. Now as we go down we can see that no MAC addresses have been stuck so what we should do is send some data through. So I'm going to ping from there to there and it's successful, that's good. Let's go and have a look at our running config again. And now that sticky has stuck the MAC address of that port there. So that PC's MAC address is 0001C752-4727. It's been stuck on that port. Good. That is just about all we need. And things are beeping left, right and centre in my place. Okay, so what would be good to is actually test this stuff out. Um, I'm not going to make this too long, so I won't go and test things. But if we show port security, then we can actually see our violation count up there, um, see other bits and pieces that are in there. Um, if we show MAC address table, um, we can see there's our MAC address on port FA10. We've sent data through that. Things have stuck, so there's information in there. So show port security will actually show what's actually happening. Um, show our running config shows information that's in there. Now one thing about this from a security perspective, if I don't now save this running config to startup config, when the switch reboots, it will restick new MAC addresses if they have changed. So if you want these to be the MAC addresses that are stuck for a long period of time, um, then get your network all converged, ping everything, make sure everything is stuck through the system, and then um, copy your running config to startup config and that way you will keep your sticky MAC addresses in your startup config should the switch restart for some reason. Could be someone trying to hack your system, could be a power outage and a reboot. So just be careful of that. MAC addresses and sticky only stick in the running config. Cool. So that is the basics of port security on the edge ports. Um, we've also added in our black hole um, VLAN and denied that VLAN going across our trunks. Um, the third one we're going to do on these switches is a bit of spanning tree security. So what we don't want to do is have someone with a switch plug it into our network whether they're coming through these ports or not, and start to or set up as a trunk, and potentially you've got dynamic trunking protocol running, and it'll negotiate and set up trunks and do all these other bits and pieces. So we actually just don't want switches plugged in because it can mess things up. Um, VLAN trunking protocol, dynamic trunking protocol, your root bridge, all of this could be screwed over beautifully, and your whole network brought down. So for our edge ports, and the edge ports that we have at the moment are 3 to 20. In fact, what we should do is make it 3 to 24 and add it in gigabit 0, 1 to 2 and put these commands on that because even the black holes can be affected in this. So in that whole range, what we're going to do is deny spanning tree coming onto our ports 
part of it as well is to enable um, a thing called port fast. So we want these ed por edge ports to actually boot up a lot quicker. We don't want to run the spanning tree process and have the edge ports just sitting there um, taking their time. We'll just show that. So let's plug into VLAN 33 port. See it stays orange for a while. Um, that's a fair bit of time when we know that there's no switch down there. This is spanning tree negotiating with this PC to see whether it's a switch or not and whether it needs to modify the root bridge and all these other things that's so going through our whole process of listening, learning, forwarding um, and blocking to start and that's too long for our PC. We want it to boot up a lot quicker um, and there's reasons for that. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to enable port fast and then if port fast is enabled then we need to run a thing called B BPDU guard to stop bridge protocol data units which is spanning trees little PDUs from actually coming in that port. Okay so on the interfaces we're actually running spanning tree so not what we did before setting up spanning tree root bridges and all the rest we're now actually on the interface and modifying our spanning tree and if we put a question mark in there the two we're actually playing with is BPDU guard and port fast um, we can modify our link types and our VLAN how it reacts we're not really interested in that um, guard as well is a little bit outside our scope it's really forcing our root bridge to stay as root bridge it's it's guarding our um, designated ports but again a little bit outside the scope of um, CCNA but the two we want port fast and BPDU guard so what we're going to do is chuck in port fast and that's it actually we're not going to enable port fast on a trunk and we're not going to disable it. If you were to add this to a trunk, um, the trunk would actually um, ignore it. So port fast will be configured in 24 interfaces due to the range command, but will only have effect when the interfaces are in non-trunking mode. So unless we actually forced it. Yeah, so we de definitely don't want port fast in a trunking mode because spanning tree will not like it. Okay, so we've got port fast up and running. Actually, let's just quickly pop back and just see how it's panning there. So we saw how long it took before. Let's go back into that. Boop, it's up. No orange, no spanning tree running. So now this is dangerous because if you plug a switch into that port, um, it's going to mess things up. So we need to stop bridge protocol data units from coming in. So BPDU guard and we enable it. So spanning tree tree BPDU guard says any bridge protocol data unit that arrives at this range of ports so ports 3 to 24 in fast ethernet and gigabit 0, 1 and 2 we will not accept BPDUs on those ports so that secures um, our edge ports on that switch there so let's have a look at our running config so we'll show run and now we've got a bit of interest, haven't we? Well, we've secured our VLAN or separated some ports from VLAN 33. So we've done a bit of security with actually segregating our network to different VLANs. We've then put in port security and we've said let's enable port security, first one. Set our maximum said MAC addresses will be sticky and our violation mode will be restrict. Remember we could have used protect and shut down as well. And on top of that we've actually added a couple of more bits for security. One is to enable port fast is really just to say don't run spanning tree on this interface. Um, and then we've said that because port fast is on there we need to run BPDU guard to stop any bit bridge protocol data units or spanning tree from actually negotiating on that port. Now BPDU guard has to will run if port fast is enabled, otherwise it won't. So that's good. We've we've secured it quite nicely. And all the way down. 
The other thing we've added in the whole box and dice in here is our um, VLAN 777, our black hole. And we should see, I'm trying to remember if we do, yep, we should see on our trunking ports that we have allowed only the uh, VLANs that we actually want to go up that trunk. So VLANs 22, 33, and 44 are on there. So that is now quite a decent configuration. And that's it for this video. So thank you very much. Catch you later.